Today's edition of the podcast is brought to you by Coach Me Plus. Coach Me Plus is the leader in athlete management software and a product that I've been lucky enough to be using for a little over a year now. Only rivaled by the impeccable customer service that Kevin and his staff provides, Coach Me Plus's ability to constantly be amoeba like in their ability to mold and, and matriculate what you're trying to get across and bring together. Is, is absolutely fantastic. Their constant pursuit of better ways and better methods and, and innovations and progress to their own product is absolutely fantastic. Go over to coachmeplus.com, check out what they got, guys. It's, uh, it's something that I guarantee you won't be disappointed with. Hello and welcome to the podcast. Today, guys, we're going to sit down and talk with Delaware's football strength and conditioning coach, Chris Stewart, and we're going to talk about the transitioning process, guys. Stu was, uh, started at Tennessee and then was at the University of Richmond and now Delaware. Three really unique and, and different uh, athletic departments that he's been able to be a part of. Uh, and, and he's going to talk about how each spot was different, what he learned along the way, and, and lessons from each one that has brought him to, to where he is now. It's really an awesome talk, guys. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Let's get right to it. All right. Stu, thanks for being on with us today, buddy. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Hey, man. So listen, let's give everybody a quick little rundown of where you've been so we can get into to what we're talking about today. Okay. Uh, my Probably my first coach's experience was uh, when I was uh, an undergrad student at Western Carolina. Um, began an internship, apprenticeship basically there, which led to an internship at the University of Tennessee. So uh, I was fortunate enough to uh to, to, to help a guy that Rob Phillips, who uh, at Western, where he had just left a graduate assistantship at Tennessee. So he was able to get me in the door with uh, Stucky and Moffitt and those guys. So that kind of started my uh, coaching carousel, I guess, and uh, was at Tennessee from uh, 1998 to 2009. Um, so basically dur during um, the majority of the Philip former era and then um, coaching changes happen and uh, you, you have to go go elsewhere. So uh, tremendous opportunity at that point to uh, to, you know, build a network, but also to have a lot of experience and be able to uh, kind of climb the ladder from intern up to the uh, first assistant or associate director. So um, I, that was fortunate, but it's uh, it, it's easy too, because you don't have, everything's in place for you. Um, and so, so the biggest change I've had was going from Tennessee to Richmond. And that was the next job I landed was at the university of Richmond. Um, and that's where we, you know, we met and, uh, and got to uh, form great working relationships there, um, was there from 09, um, until I just started at the university of Delaware, um, January of, uh, of 2017. So, um, so that's, that's, that's my career in, in a nutshell. Um, and, uh, like I said, backing up to, to the, to Richmond, um, you know, coming in the new guy, um, I, you know, that was, that was interesting. You trying to learn everybody and, um, uh, and, and learn the, uh, you know, how everything is flowing and everybody's working together and all the teams, um, something I really didn't have to do at Tennessee. You know, I just had a couple of teams. Now, I worked a lot of teams over the years, but you had no more than, than one or two at a time, um, including football. So uh, coming into Richmond, um, I, going from all the facilities you need down to hallways and small weight rooms and no excuses, find a way to get it done, you know. Um, but it definitely helps you uh, – um, I think it makes you a better coach. I, I totally think it makes you a better coach and you have to think, you have to be more organized, you have to be more prepared. Um, you got to come up with, you know, what, what are we going to do if it thunders outside? You know, where are we going to go? Um, construction, we're always dealing with that. And uh, so, you know, uh, it definitely prepared me for the next step of going to Delaware, um, which was, uh, it was challenging um, because we had a great staff at Richmond. I mean, you know, you and, and Jeff and Beecher, um, we had a continuity I think was um, unique and uh, we all worked well together. Um, it made my job easy. Um, and, and so coming in here, you know, I was the only guy um, and that was a challenge um, at first, you know, while, you know, Coach Rocco was fortunate to bring 12 or 13 guys along with him. And um, so it's nice to have a group that you're familiar with, but they're all going on the road recruiting. I was put in charge of, hey, it's time to get the weight room going, get the strength and conditioning program going. We'll see you guys. We'll see you at the end of the week. And um, I, was, I was fortunate enough to uh, to, to uh, 
uh, find a, an assistant uh, that was familiar with the guys, um, familiar with the, uh, you know, the, the uh, facilities and the scheduling and things like that. So uh, Jim McGuire is his name. And, um, you know, we, we've been working, you know, side by side through this whole process. Um, so that that's I've been fortunate for that. That's awesome. That's a, uh, that's a lot of steps. There's a lot of things in between. I, 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 we can we can talk for hours, but you know, um, first and foremost, you know, when you take a job and you get into a school like this, then you have, you know, you got your whole HR process, right? So I'm sitting in HR meetings and I'm sitting filling out paperwork that my wife needs to be up here doing, not me. You know, all the health insurance and all the benefits and retirement and. The right side of my brain is going, I need to get out of here and go start putting things on the dry race board, start putting a program together, start getting familiar with Jim, get, getting the guys, um, getting the library guys set up and all that, you know, so it's kind of like, okay, let's hurry up and get this move along with this so I can get on with the, uh, <laughs> with the strength conditioning part because like most schools, you start the second week of January. Um, we have a winter session. So January 3rd was our first day of training. So I literally had a day or two to get things organized and up and running. Um, with that being said, it kind of helped me formulate the process. Um, I said, you know, we're going to take it three weeks at a time. And that's basically what I've done throughout the winter and spring session. We're in, uh, we are in our eighth week of training. Um, we gave them off a few days between winter session, and spring session. Um, but we, uh, you know, I felt like, I, you know, how do I know what the end is going to look like? I don't even know what the beginning for the guys looks like. I don't know what, how, how well these guys, um, are, you know, it's been a while since they played, um, you know, they didn't make it to the playoffs. So how deconditioned are they? So, you know, basically we were starting slower, um, you know, trying to, trying to build a relationship, trust and my coaching style. And, um, and, you know, we were training five days a week. Um, and, you know, I was basically breaking it up to a Monday, Wednesday, Friday lift condition, Tuesday, Thursday, speed, agility. And I was basically telling them along each step of this process, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to give you time to learn it. I'm going to teach it. I want you to learn it. I'm going to give you a chance to execute it. We're going to go back. We're going to critique it. We're going to pick up the tempo as we move along. And then um, over those three weeks, things will start to advance. Um, you know, one of my big things was, was Olympic lifting with the guys and they did it, but didn't, you know, we all teach it a little differently. So, um, coming in and teaching them how to bend and drop and absorb force and, you know, um, being able to uh, perform those Olympic lifts correctly. And, you know, it's, um, especially for the older guys, it's tougher because they've been training so long, but, um, but, you know, that was a process, um, you know, teaching, you know, it's, it's cliche ish, but, you know, from the ground up foundation, you know, foundation conditioning, teaching guys how to land good athletic position, being able to uh, maintain an athletic position and all of our agility movements and things. I know that was one thing that was important to coach Rocco when he got here after evaluating the team when we played him in the season. So um, having the relationship with him helped, helped a lot because I understand his needs and wants. He's very freely with coming and talking with me. I think we have a good relationship that way. So it was, um, it helped me have, have, a, you know, a development our goal for spring practice, but we're both knowing it's a, it's a process. You know, I'm using this time for, to lay the foundation for what the expectation will be for the summer. I feel like we'll get off to a, to a really fast start in the summertime. So. Yes. No, now that's awesome. And I think that one thing that a lot of different people are running into the same situation or at least ran through it within the last month or two is the reassessment of what someone else had been doing. And I think that a lot of people jump to conclusions about this, that, or the other thing about how things were going or what they were doing or how things went. Um, but seeing it now in my, with my fourth director um, here, how did you do that? When you okay, stepped so, in the weight room, how did you look at your guys? <clears throat> right. Well, um, basically, I, I had no predetermined – thought at all. Okay. And I made that very clear to myself. I did the same thing when I came to Richmond. Uh, I'm going to judge these guys on from moving forward from the first day they meet, meet me on their commitment and their consistency. Okay. Um, and, you know, I felt like, you know, the, you know, we'll, we'll get to where we need to be. My goal is don't rush the process. 
So I did, you know, and and I'm in a unique situation because let's back up one step and I'll, and look at how the 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 coaching staff is is laid out. So Ted Perlack was the head football strength coach when I got before I got here. He was the head strength coach over all the department, much like the position I had um, at Richmond. Mm -hmm. So um, so Ted was moved into an, an assistant administration role coaching basketball and overseeing the department and they created a head football only strength and conditioning position for for myself you know and um so ted and i worked together we worked together with you know scheduling um and and facilities and you know and he, he's been outstanding to work with so um there hasn't been any type of con con conflicts where i could see at other schools there might be you come in and um and you know, everybody's kind of pushed aside. Um, but, you know, we need to work together for everybody to be successful. So um, I don't I don't think that um, that, you know, I don't think there was any type of 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 conflict because he was actually gaining a position he wanted. That was his ultimate goal. He, he, he wanted more administration. He wanted to be more, more of an assistant AD type position. Um, so when I come in, you know, it's it's the guys have been off for a while. It's a fresh start. And that's exactly what I presented them with. This is a fresh start, guys. You know, um, we're going to earn the right to win. OK, and I don't talk about the past at all. I never have. And I think that it's, you know, who am I to judge what they did? I don't really know what they did. You know, I wasn't in the fire in the middle of the eye of the storm when they're training, you know, all summer. And, you know, and I, I don't know. So it's not fair to come in and, and say, you know, the way you did, it's wrong. Um, I think the most important part is that they buy into what I'm telling them. If I'm going to be successful, if the team's going to be successful, they have to buy into what and, and to what I'm to what I'm wanting them to achieve. So, you know, it was things like that. Let's you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm just reiterating what Coach Rocco tells the team on a weekly basis with his with his meetings. We're going to earn the right to win. We're going to believe in the process. We're going to, you know, the process is more important than the outcome. The outcome will take care of itself. But at this time of the year, we're focusing on, you know, um, we're focusing on being more athletic. We, everybody wants to get faster in the field. Everybody wants to get bigger. We want to get stronger. Um, but we got to have something we can put on the field. And then we all got to come together. You know, we all got to be a unit. We all got to be a single unit. And, um, the one thing that I noticed about this group is um, they are eager to learn. You know, they want to win. And 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 if you have that drive, um, then show me the commitment. Show me the commitment. And um, the way the schedule was structured, we had, to have, so we had to start every morning very early. I mean, you know, my first group was either at 6 or 6.30. And, um, and if it was Tuesday and Thursday, it was the entire team. So, um, you know, we got off to a great start with that. And I said, you know, let's work for four good weeks and then I'm going to give you uh, some days off before spring semester starts between the winter. That's something they weren't accustomed to. So it was kind of like I was kind of dangling that carrot over him. You know, I was like, you know, give me the commitment. Show me show me the consistency. Prove to Coach Rocco and, our, and the staff that, you know, you guys are all in. And, and then we, we, you know, we gave them a couple of days and then we started right back with the spring. You know, the winter session is a lot like summer. You only have one class. And so, the, the you know, it's not as time management is not so much of an issue. Then it's, it, you know, it's easier for the guys get into the spring. It's different. So I felt like it was important to uh, to kind of give them a, a breather to kind of get organized um, into the spring. And uh, it was well, well accepted. So um, to, to back to go back to your question, how do you do it? I think I think it's, you know from my point from from the time I start moving forward we're we're going at it we're not we're not discussing the past we're not look we're not critiquing what you did we're not we're we're moving forward and we're buying into this process and um and you know I think with the commitment and the consistency you've got you know you've got you got something to work with and um you know the, kid, the kids have responded I, I I've been extremely positive with them and um um, like I said, man, they're hungry and, and, and it's fun to work with kids like that, you know? Um, so. No, and that's great. So then let's talk a little bit. How did, how did the experience coming from Tennessee to Richmond help moving forward to Delaware? And then how, when you got to Delaware, were there things that like were easy and worked here that were like, well, I, it might not work here. 
<laughs> okay, so moving from Tennessee to, to Richmond, I was on the phone a lot talking to the older coaches that have made a lot of moves. You know, I was – well, I'm not old, I'm not young anymore, but I was – back then I, I consider myself a little bit younger. So, you know, and, okay, what are the things I need to look out for? How do – you know, and and I remember hearing, you know, okay, first thing you get there, you got to get with the academic – person figure out the class schedules get them on a schedule get organized you know your facilities walk through your weight rooms do this you know so coming from an indoor facility um, where we could do everything we needed to do in an efficient manner and get into the weight room fast I mean just in the fact that you could take 20 guys line them up and warm them up in one line rather than you know in the weight room at Richmond where you might have a line of three guys at a time it buys you a lot of time, so you're more efficient. So it's like, okay, all that you take into consideration. So it was working through things like that, I think, were more difficult at that point. Now, coming here has reminded me a little bit like Tennessee. We have an indoor facility so, and a weight room connected right to it. And in the morning, it's all ours. So it kind of opens your playbook back up. You know, I can, I can, and, and I don't know if I really created more work, but it allowed me time more time to explain and teach without feeling rushed hmm. because you know you could you could do more you could do more in a shorter amount of time i guess you know i'm kind of going back and forth but you know i just it allowed i, fe- I never felt rushed and then i also told myself hey if we need to back up take a step back if we need to draw it in a little bit then let's do it but let's get it right what we're doing day one let's work on getting day one right so mo- every Monday to Monday to Monday to Monday, it should show an improvement, and then vice versa throughout the entire week. And um, and so you know, I think that um, moving here, they did a great job of the the schedule was already set. You know, we had a phone call over the break um, right before I got up here, and you know they were kind of filling me out. Hey, how many days a week do you want to go? I said, let's just start with this. Let's go five days a week. Let's go hour to an hour and a half sessions. And they were like, okay, we can we can set all that up because, you know, I, I never saw the place. So I didn't know really what all I was going to be able to do and what. So I said, get in. I actually I was reaching for as much as I could get. And when I got here, the groups were in place. And um, so that helped a lot. So that was easier making this transition here in a short amount of time, which is having the guys in a schedule. And then um, obviously having the facilities, um, you know, there's two weight rooms where we had three at Richmond, but having that indoor facility is huge yeah. because it is not only weather. Now this this winter wouldn't be an issue, but not only weather, but just the proximity, you know, of of, of getting in and out of the weight room faster. I mean, warm up, get in the weight room, train, go out. It's a there's a lined track on the turf, so we can get some conditioning in, and you know, it just it just made it more efficient, and. Um, and organized and I, and I like that um, um, coming in um, you know one challenge was one assistant where at Richmond I had two full-time assistants plus set up interns we're beginning the intern process trying to get them in for the summer but you know so I was a little nervous a little you know with that many guys getting enough eyes on them and coaching them but um, I felt like we did it I felt like we can do it because you know I'm not I'm, there's not. I'm trying to limit so many turning parts at one time. Focus on this. Move to the next thing. Focus on this. Move. The, now the next week, pick up the intensity. We got it. Let's keep moving. You know, and so try to try to simplify. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, and that's awesome. And I think that a pretty cool spot that we could kind of wrap this up getting into is since there's a lot of people, you know, people younger than us that are going to go through this once, twice, three times. What's your, what is your advice to them when they get into this situation? You know, you had some, some heavy hitters to lean on and not everybody is, is, is lucky to, to, to be able to, to call people like, like we would be. So if, if, if Johnny calls up and is like, oh man, what, what would your advice be to him? Be, be a magnet. Don't, 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 don't push people away. Be a magnet. And that goes for the players. Um, Important. I mean, that just makes a good strength coach. I mean, you'll be able to draw your guys in. But for everybody, there are so many moving parts in, a, in, a, in an athletic department. And, um, you know, my message always is we're, we're going to get it done. You know, I didn't come in saying we got to have 
new weight room, new equipment, blah, 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 blah. You know, they've already took a step to create the position. So I didn't want it to be like, you know, and, and now here he comes and look at this. You know, we're going to find a way to get it done. Um, we have what we need to get it done um, and then start building relationships within within the department because you're going to need those people. And one thing I noticed here, there was a tremendous amount of support for football. A tremendous amount of support and everybody was coming by, you know, hey, how can we help you? How you know this? And, you know, it was just, you know, trying to trying to fit into the family, you know, and um, and be a part of it um, and not be a deterrent, not be a complainer, not be one that f- appears to be overwhelmed. And I think um, we've all seen that in people at times where you and I think the way you go about that is your organization and the belief in what you're doing. Okay. I believe in this. This is how I want to do it. This is, you know, the process I want to do, want to do to get it done, to reach the goal. Um, But let's face it, we're not playing a football game in the next month. We have time. So, um, you know, so I wanted, you know, simplify it, organize it and um, get the most we can out of it. But, but uh, do it as I want people to feel like they can approach me you know, administration and all those people. So um, I think that's the biggest thing. Don't be a deterrent, you know, be come in and and be a part of the family and, um, and appreciative for what we got because it was a great opportunity. And, um, and, you know, there's a lot of support here. So, you know, I wanted to feel like, Hey, I'm I'm gracious for you guys allowing me the opportunity to be here and be a part of it. No, that's awesome, man. And just kind of taking some takeaway points, you know, and, and this could work for any situation, you know, slow down and teach. I mean, especially mm-hmm. when you're walking into a new spot, keep focus and be organized, you know, especially with the kids. Cause if you come in and, and you look for shoveled and who knows how they're going to handle it and, and be a magnet for, for all those around you, whether it be yeah. the student athletes or the staff, I think those are three like huge takeaways. Uh, just here real quick, man. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. No yeah. Problem. But yeah, man, Stu, appreciate you being on, brother. Absolutely killer. And uh, we'll be in touch real soon, brother. Sounds great. Yeah, Thank man. you for having me. Thank you. And a huge thanks to Delaware Strength and Conditioning Coach Chris Stewart for sitting down and talking with us today. Guys, those, those three points that Stu brings up are, are big time. You know, we got to make sure we slow down and we teach. The kids need to be good at what we want them to be good at, right? And there's no better way to, to, to do that than to slow down teach them, make sure that they understand what we're trying to get them to do and progress from there. You know, and obviously keeping focus and and organization when you're in a position where you're hitting the ground running like Stu was up there, it's, if you're not organized, you're going to get stuck in the mud. So, you know, couldn't, couldn't agree with that anymore. And being a magnet for those around you, you know, if, especially in a situation where, where you're coming in as a new guy, you know, you, you want to draw people in to be able to get the help and, and get the things that you need accomplished. So, Kudos to Stu. Great talk. And if you did enjoy it, guys, please share it through the social media outlet of your choice. Uh, If you haven't subscribed on Podomatic, iTunes, or you're not a subscriber on Facebook, please do so. Uh, But share it if you may. If you guys enjoyed it, we're just trying to get great information out to all the great coaches out there. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever it may be. Go ahead and share all the information we have, guys. Just, Just trying to help spread the word and get great information out to all the great coaches out there. Uh, But thank you all for everything that you do for us here at Central Virginia Sport Performance. We will be back next week with another awesome guest. We will see you then.